Frank Zhang is a character from the Heroes of Olympus and Trials of Apollo, and today I'll explain his life, from his childhood and to the events of the first five books of the Heroes of Olympus. Before getting into it, there will be spoilers. And with that, let's get started. Frank Zhang was born on June 5 to the Roman god of war Mars and a mortal military soldier named Emily Zhang. Frank's mother, Emily, was a descendant of Periclemenus, a grandson of Poseidon, which makes Frank distantly related to Percy Jackson. Because of this, Frank's mother's side was gifted with the ability to shapeshift, and with this and a godly parent running in his blood, Frank was said to be an extremely powerful demigod. With this great power, he was told he might have a short life, and it came true when Juno, the goddess of marriage, came to them. Juno told them that Frank's life depended on a piece of firewood, and that if it burned entirely, Frank would die. This made Frank's fear of fire develop in his life, and it would only grow years later. Later on in his life, Frank's mother unfortunately died in a war in Afghanistan. Now an orphan, Frank was taken in by his grandmother. On the day of Frank's mother's funeral, his grandmother told him about his giftedness and how he was a son of a Roman god. His grandmother didn't specify which god though, and Frank would often wonder who his father was. That night, Frank was taken by the wolf goddess Lupa to be trained for Camp Jupiter. Frank would spend years training under Lupa until he finally passed to go to camp. Once Frank was eligible to go to camp, his grandmother told him to tell the praetor that Frank was sorry for what his ancestor Shen Lun did. His grandmother never specified why Frank should be sorry, but Frank did what she asked him to. Frank apologized to Reina Ramirez Arleano, the praetor, and Reina accepted it. She then told him to not tell anyone about his relation to Shen Lun, as Shen Lun caused an earthquake that destroyed Camp Jupiter once. With all of this in mind, let's go to The Son of Neptune, the second book in the Heroes of Olympus, where Frank made his first appearance. During this time, Frank had just been in Camp Jupiter for a month, and he was still on probation by Reina. Frank was also bullied by some of the campers, which caused him to be pretty insecure about himself. He also met and became friends with a demigod daughter of Pluto named Hazel Levesque. Hazel and Frank became very close, and Frank fell in love with her. There were odd rumors about Hazel's past, which made some of the Romans gossip about her, but Frank didn't care about them and accepted her. In The Son of Neptune, we meet Frank with Hazel on guard duty, when suddenly, a demigod son of Poseidon named Percy Jackson came to them. Percy was being chased by Gorgons, and both Frank and Hazel helped Percy defeat him. From the fight, Frank was able to get vials of Gorgon's blood, and Frank collected them, as it was said that one of the vials could heal or kill someone. Later on in the book, Frank is shown to be a skilled archer, and he always prayed that Apollo, the god of archery, would one day claim him. After dinner, Frank meets up with Hazel and Percy for a war game, and the trio ultimately wins. After it though, Mars, Frank's father comes in and gives him a quest to free Thanatos, the god of death. Mars also said that Frank was going to lead the quest, and that Frank was his son. Learning that Mars was his father, Frank was greatly disappointed, and his self-doubt made him think that he just sent everyone to a death sentence. The next day, Frank is made centurion by Reina and Octavian, and some of the Romans got outraged since Frank was just under probation. Reina and Octavian made them shut up, and Frank got the Roman tattoo that all Roman demigods had. After that meeting, the trio left on a boat. While on the boat, Hazel gets a blackout, and Frank worries about her. As Percy left to check the surroundings, Frank talked to Hazel about the blackout, and he gathered that Hazel was from a different time, based on how Hazel reacted to modern slang and technology. Hazel tells him that she doesn't deserve him as a friend because of what she did in the past, and Frank said it was alright as she wasn't the only one with secrets. Hazel got confused, and Frank was about to say his fire would secret, but at that moment, Hazel was attacked by Carpoy. Frank and Percy save her, and later, the trio went to a store. They were suddenly attacked by a basilisk snakes, and Frank's bow got destroyed in the fight. Inside the store, they met Iris, the goddess of rainbows, and she talked with Frank privately. From it, she told Frank to give his firewood to someone he trusted, so that it wouldn't burden him that much. When he leaves the shop, he's suddenly attacked by the basilisks, but he managed to survive thanks to his father's spear. The spear summoned the dead soldier that followed Frank's order of killing the snakes, and Frank meets Percy and Hazel afterward. Soon enough, they met Phineas, a blind seer, and Frank witnessed Phineas's death after giving them the address of Alcyones, a giant. Back on the boat, Frank took Iris' advice and gave the fire with the Hazel, as out of everybody, Frank trusted her the most. They soon went to Frank's grandmother's house, and there, he talked with her and his father Mars. 
Both his grandmother and father told him to embrace his gift and to stop being insecure about himself because Frank was a gifted person who could do better. Frank then went to Percy and Hazel to discuss their trip to Alaska, when suddenly, the house was lit on fire by giants outside. The house burned to the ground, and his grandmother unfortunately died in the fire. Frank mourned her death, and this incident might have made his fear of fire even worse. When they met Hyla, the queen of the Amazons and Reyna's sister, Frank and Percy were kept in a cell, and once the place was attacked, Hazel took them out of there and her horse Orion, and the trio escaped. Soon enough, the demigods arrived in Alaska, and they met the giant Alkyones. Alkyones had Thanatos captured, and Frank ran to free Thanatos as Hazel fought Alkyones. Thanatos told Frank that the only way to remove the chains was the fire of life, and Frank realized that he had to burn a part of a stick. Making his decision, Frank took the stick despite Hazel's protests and lit it on fire. As the stick burned, Frank said, If I'm going to burn, it might as well be bright. It worked, and Thanatos was free. Frank then ran to help Hazel, and he was able to use his shape-shifting ability. Both Hazel and Percy were shocked at Frank's ability, and Frank and Hazel defeated Alkyones. After killing the giant, Hazel suddenly kissed Frank, and they all went back to Camp Jupiter. Frank helped defend the camp against Polybotes, and the Romans won the battle. And now, let's go to the Mark of Athena. We meet Frank after a demigod son of Hephaestus named Leo Valdez fired at Camp Jupiter, and the Romans started attacking the ship. Frank along with the rest of the Seven escaped from the Argo too, but both Jason and Piper got injured. The majority of the Seven went to check on Jason and Piper, but Frank didn't join them, and instead went to Leo. When they had boarded the ship, Hazel recognized Leo as her first boyfriend, Sammy Valdez, and she told Frank about him. This made Frank curious about Leo, especially after what Leo did to Camp Jupiter. When Frank asked Leo if Leo's name was Sammy, Leo gets confused and says no. After this, Hazel and Leo became pretty close, which was making Frank question what was going on. With all of this, it can be said that Frank disliked Leo, and another reason for that was because of Leo's fire powers, which Frank saw as a threat to his firewood. When the crew needed supplies to repair the ship, Frank went with Percy and Annabeth to get them, and Frank felt annoyed when he saw Hazel and Leo go together. That night, Percy and Annabeth snuck into the stables to bond, and they ended up falling asleep in each other's arms. The rest of the crew didn't know about this though, and they thought that Percy and Annabeth were missing. A search for them was issued, and Frank was the one who found the two of them close together. Frank felt embarrassed walking in on them, and shortly after this, Frank joined Percy and Coach Hedge to find Forces. They ended up in the Georgian Aquarium, and Forces trapped Percy and Frank in a tank. Frank panicked and he transformed into a koi fish so that he can breathe in the water. In the end, both of them were saved by Coach Hedge, and they ran back to the Argo too. Later, Frank got himself trapped in a Chinese finger trap, and Leo mercilessly made jokes about him, which further hurt Frank's self-esteem. Frank couldn't get the Chinese finger trap off of him, and he went to Annabeth for help. Annabeth was able to get it off, and soon, the team landed in Charleston. The group decided to spread out, and Frank, Jason, and Leo went to a Civil War museum, where they were suddenly attacked by the Romans. Frank and the rest had to fight them off, and a few days later, they were suddenly attacked by Scalopendra. During this time, Hazel and Leo had just entered a flashback, and Frank sees the two of them close together. Frank gets jealous at this, and he and Leo were thrown in the underwater cell together. There, Frank and Leo talked about the flashback Leo had with Hazel, which is about Sammy Valdez. Frank questions this, and says, Hazel like your great-grandfather? That's why she likes you? And Leo replied, Frank, I know this is weird, believe me, but I don't like Hazel, not that way. I'm not moving in on your girl. From this, Leo makes it clear that nothing romantic was going on between him and Hazel, and Frank eventually believed him. Leo tries to use fire to get them out of their cell, and Frank gets terrified. Leo deduced that Frank had fire phobia from some traumatic event, which Leo can't fully blame since Leo's mother died in the fire as well. He tells this to Frank, and the two opens up. Frank ends up telling Leo about his firewood, which Leo didn't understand, but Hazel cleared it out to him when they arrived back to the Argo too. Leo felt bad for Frank, and because of this, he became relatively kinder to him. After this, the crew was attacked by Chrysior, and it was up to Percy and Frank to save the crew. According to legend, Chrysior's men were cursed into dolphins by the Ionesis, and Percy claimed that the Ionesis was their leader. 
Percy went on to say that the Yonases would be angry at Crisior if they bothered the Seven, and that they might be changed into dolphins. To emphasize this, Frank made a show of choking before transforming into a dolphin. This was enough to make Crisior's men jump overboard, and Frank transformed into a grizzly bear and threw Crisior overboard as well. Later, Frank, Leo, and Hazel went out of the ship and searched for Nico, and they were suddenly followed by the Adolans. They ran to a pantheon for cover, and the Adolans knocked out Frank and Hazel. Leo managed to save them all with the help of a fortune cookie he got from Nemesis, and Leo drilled the hole in the wall to escape. It was just a small hole though, and because of this, Frank transformed into a weasel and went through it. Frank took a transmitter outside, and he gave it to Leo. Leo used the transmitter to hack on the Coach Hedges TV in the Argo 2 to let them know where Frank and the rest were. Once Frank, Leo, and Hazel were saved, they went on the Argo 2 to save Percy, Jason, Piper, and Nico. And once they were rescued, they all decided to find Annabeth next. Annabeth had followed the mark of Athena, and it was a quest to get the Athena Parthenos. Frank and the rest helped bring the Athena Parthenos to the Argo 2, but Percy and Annabeth ended up falling into Tartarus. And now, Let's go to the house of Hades. After Hazel met Hecate, Frank and the rest discuss what to do next. In this book, it's revealed that voices of his father's Greek and Roman versions were always arguing in Frank's head because they believed that Leo had caused the rift between the Romans and the Greeks after Leo fired at Camp Jupiter. Because of this, they urged Frank to kill Leo, but Frank kept arguing back that Leo wasn't the enemy. When they arrived in Venice, Frank, Hazel, and Nico went out of the ship and were suddenly attacked by monsters. Hazel got injured the most, and Frank brought her to Triptolemus, a minor god. Trip refused to heal Hazel, because Hazel was a daughter of Pluto. Nico tries to argue with Trip, but Trip turns Nico into a plant. Seeing that it was up to him, Frank makes a bargain with Trip instead. Frank tells Trip that he'll give Trip a serpent for a chariot, in exchange for curing Hazel and turning Nico back to normal. Trip agrees to this, and Frank needed to get Mars' attention to ask Mars for the serpent. Frank went outside and single-handedly killed all the Cato Bloodbus in Venice, and this show of strength just shows how powerful Frank really was, and it was honestly really satisfying to read this scene. Mars noticed Frank's act and gave him the serpent. From this incident, Frank became more confident, and Trip cured Hazel and turned Nico back to normal. A couple of days later, Keone and her brothers attacked the ship, and she freezes both Jason and Frank into a block of ice. When Frank was unfrozen, he learns that Piper saved them, but at that moment, a wind bomb sent by one of Keone's brothers landed on the ship, and it made them move all the way to the tip of Africa. Keone had also sent Leo out of the ship, and they tried finding him, but Leo was nowhere to be seen. Soon enough, Leo was able to get back with the Seven, and they all reached the Necromantion. There, Nico tried commanding the dead Romans with the scepter, and as a praetor, Jason tried commanding them. It didn't work because Jason's Roman identity inside him was fading away, and to help, Frank tried commanding the Romans. It works a bit because Frank was a centurion, but not all of the Romans follow him. With that, Jason gave Frank his praetor position, and Frank felt his power rise inside him. Frank became a literal beast in the battle, taking down monster after monster, especially since he was given Mars' blessing, which made him even more invincible. After that battle, Percy and Annabeth got out of Tartarus, and then they met Reyna. Reyna congratulated Frank for being a praetor, and Jason took him aside and told him about the duties and responsibilities of a praetor. And with that, let's go to the blood of Olympus. Here, Jason, Annabeth, and Piper went undercover to get information on Gaia's plans, and a fight happens. Jason got stabbed by Michael Varys, and Frank transformed into an eagle and brought Jason back to the ship. A few days later, Frank and Annabeth led the conversation about defeating Nike, and it was decided that Frank, Percy, Hazel, and Leo were going to Olympia to meet Nike. When they met Nike, a fight breaks out, and Hazel got a bit injured. Frank gave her Ambrosia to heal her, and they soon went back to the ship. A few days later, Frank met with Piper to scout Pylos, and they had fought an ogre, Stymphalian birds, and warthogs on the way. Frank's clothes had been ruined from the attacks, and Piper took him shopping. After that, they soon met up with Frank's relatives in a cave, and his relatives were cold and rude towards Frank. Piper told Frank that his relatives were stupid for not liking him, and gave him a hug, which Frank accepted. Frank then told the crew of what happened, and they arrived at Mykonos, where all the seven got ice cream. 
Fred didn't eat ice cream, though, because he was lactose intolerant, and was given an apple instead. Soon, the ship landed in Delos, and once they arrived, Frank, Leo, and Hazel went down from the ship to talk to Apollo and Artemis. Frank and Hazel talk with Artemis, and Artemis tells him that Nico was alright, and then they met up with Leo. Leo ended up seeing his plan of sacrificing himself to defeat Gaia, and Frank was horrified. As Hazel cried and hugged Leo, Frank cried as well, but agreed that it was probably the only way to defeat Gaia. When Jason, Piper, and Leo were going to meet Asclepius for the cure, Frank told Leo to be careful, and when the Seven held the meeting later, Frank kept Leo's secret. When the Seven arrived in Athens, the battle against the giants started, and Frank helped in the fight. When the gods' identity crisis stopped, they came to fight and help their kids, and Frank fought a giant together with his father's Greek version Ares. Frank and the rest were then launched into Camp Haplin for the final battle, and Frank met up with Raynan to lead the Romans into the fight. When Gaia started rising, Frank and the rest witnessed Leo's sacrifice and death, and despite knowing that it would happen, Frank felt devastated. He meets with the rest, and told them that Leo told him and Hazel about the sacrifice. And at first, the rest of the seven were angry that they kept the secret, but they all mourned Leo's death. Days after Leo's death, Frank and Raynor started talking with Chiron and the campers to form good relations between the Greeks and the Romans. One night, Frank went to the Hades campus to meet Hazel and Nico. Frank then talked with Nico, telling him that the Romans would be leaving tomorrow to head back to Camp Jupiter, and Nico tells him he did great. Frank then said it was a surprise that he managed to live through it all, despite the firewood weakness he had. Nico tells him that as a son of Hades, Nico was able to sense if someone was close to death, and he told him that Frank wasn't. Through this, he tells Frank that he should live his life, and he jokingly adds that Frank should be good to his sister, or to Hazel. Hazel tells Nico to not threaten Frank, and Nico brushes it off, saying that Frank was a good guy, and to invite him as a flower boy when Hazel and Frank got married. Frank got flustered by the thought, but he told Nico that he can join them in Camp Jupiter, which Nico refused. The next day, Frank went back to camp with Raina and Hazel, and that's how the book ends for Frank. Frank's journey doesn't end here, so tune in for part 2 on the life of Frank Zhang, where we'll talk about what happens to him in the trials of Apollo, the books after the blood of Olympus. So how about you? What's your favorite Frank moment? Let me know in the comments down below.